Oh, that looks much better. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is uh, Dean Tenney, a.k.a. Series 7 Guru, and Brian Lee, a.k.a. The Test Geek. Uh, we do Tuesday nights. We always do our um, weekly live stream Q&A. And so uh, if you uh, are joining us for the first time, we start with a debrief. So we'll briefly get that done. We'll do some housekeeping. Then we answer questions on any FINRA NAS exam until about uh, an hour, 630. And then we do a drawing. So we'll uh, get going on uh, brief and debrief. Brief is things you can uh, debrief as victorious test takers uh, telling us what they uh, saw on their exam. We're not allowed to like ask you particular questions, but I can say, what were you not prepared for? Or what do you think we could have done a better job preparing you for? Things like that. So first is uh, 6566. ADRs are high probability on all exams. I can't imagine any exam where you're not going to get tested about an American depository receipt best characterized as foreign securities in a domestic wrapper trade in our domestic market. Uh, you do it for uh, negative correlation, hopefully. I mean, that doesn't in the real world, the real world and the test world are entirely different worlds, but <laughs> a different correlation than your U.S. assets, stocks. And then uh, remember, you have currency risk. If the underlying business is uh, conducting the currency, foreign currency, you have that currency risk. Now, what this uh, test taker got asked about, and this is a lower probability, is the tax consequences. So it doesn't matter in this question where I give you an ADR, I give you the Kingdom of Norway or the Republic of Mexico. It does not matter by international treaty. So whether I was supposed to receive $1,000 an interest income from my Kingdom of Norway bonds or a thousand dollars in dividends from my Telefonus to Mexico ADR it does not matter. The country of origin is going to have a 15% withholding tax. So that means instead of getting a thousand, I'm going to get 850. And this test taker was asked, well, what is the tax consequences? What I do is I claim the entire amount and then I take a credit, not a deduction, a credit for whatever the country of origin kept. So in this example, I'd claim the thousand dollars and take a credit dollar for dollar whack out of my tax bill for the 150. The other thing that keeps coming up uh, on debrief is uh, people telling me they had more preferred stock questions than they were expecting. And I don't quite know what to make of that because I don't know what they were expecting. But you should certainly be prepared uh, on uh, all the exams, SIE, primarily Series 7 and 65 to be able to do practical application of accumulated preferred stock in arrears. And they're gonna ask you how much must they pay to the preferred stockholders until they can pay a dividend in common. We're testing on two things. Can you figure that out? And do you know that preferred stock has preferential treatment and dividends? It's a senior security in both dividends and liquidation. And then the uh, twist that this person got on their 65, you should be prepared for this all the time, is they had quarterly dividends instead of annual dividends. That's a pretty common kind of thing to have to deal with. So. Uh, that's debrief. Uh, starting next week, we're going to start the live stream at 5 p.m. instead of 5.30. Now, the reason I'm doing that is last week we did an overtime session on Zoom and people kind of like that. And that means we can take a break at 6 and reconvene for those who are participating in the overtime Zoom at 6.15. That gives you time to get a refreshment or do whatever you need to do before you join us in the overtime uh, live stream. You can access that through uh, my booking page. It's free, it's capped at 10. As of tonight, I think there's a couple spots left. I know there's people who've already booked for Tuesday. I'm not gonna offer the overtime session every Tuesday. It's when the spirits, you know, when it speaks to me, it does, and when it doesn't, it doesn't. So, you know, if I'm teaching all day, I got other things, it won't be there. But there is one, we did the first last week, there's one tonight and there's one next Tuesday. And that would be how you access that. We also, tomorrow night, have a first class that I'm offering. On that same booking page, we have one spot left. It's on basic options and stock plus options. It's 90 bucks, 90 minutes. It's $45. And if you want to take up that last spot, same thing. It's on the same booking page. Uh, next week, we'll be doing advanced options. So uh, at the end of our session, as we said, we do a drawing for a coaching call. Tonight's coaching call would be a 5 p.m. coaching call, February 23rd. It's recorded and shared in the coaching call playlist. If you do win that, you can assign it or share it. I, I don't care. It's yours to do with it what you will. You need to claim that within one hour of the drawing. I don't like to have contingent liabilities floating around. So if you win it, 
then you send me that. You can't win more than uh, once in a row. So we call that the Marcel rule. So uh, Amy won last week. I don't know if you're with us yet, but if you are, Amy, uh, you can't win tonight. Okay. Now, uh, in terms of housekeeping, uh, Brian and I have a podcast in the works. It's called the uh, Geek and Guru Podcast. We're working on the first five episodes. It's still kind of a, oh, I don't know. What would you say, Brian? And development <laughs> you know, it's, it's in development i guess so we'll let you know when that when that uh first of the five we're gonna kind of get five uh, you know get five in the the can so to speak and uh, we'll keep you post on that we'll keep you post on that uh thursday premiere is technical analysis so on thursday nights i do premieres of various videos in terms of accessing the channel you always should go you shouldn't hunt for videos on the channel there's almost 400 videos. And if you're going to look for an individual video, it's just going to be uh, a mess. What you need to do is go find your series playlist. So if you're taking the SIE, you find that it says taking the SIE start here, you hit the hit button and it'll show you 65 videos in suggested watch order. It's a buffet. Take what you like, leave what you don't. So don't be calling me and say, what videos should you watch? I think you should watch all 400 of them, but you're obviously not going to do that. So, you know, make your own choices on that. All right, if you want to uh, buy a paid supplement, best free supplement is my YouTube channel. But if you're looking for a paid supplement, uh, the discount code for Kaplan QBank and Kaplan Quick Sheets is Guru10 at uh, checkout. And Brian uh, Lee, the test geek himself, has offered our viewers a 20% discount on his products and services. And that discount code is Guru20. Uh, I think it's one of the best paid supplements out there. His exams have very strong correlation. So, um, you know, I'm not a chauffeur for my friend, Brian, but it hurts my heart when I see people buying paid supplements that I think aren't as good an investment as uh, Test Geek and uh, Kaplan. If you want to contact Brian, uh, don't contact me about uh, Brian's been kind enough to put stuff on our channel and let me explicate it. And if you have a, a question about that, just reach out to Brian for that or his products. You know, he's more than happy to talk to you. Don't call me because I'm going to tell you it's Brian's content. It's Brian's question. Call Brian. And the guy five times I said, call Brian. And then he told me that he talked to five other people and they think Brian and I am wrong, am wrong. And I said, well, then you need to find another channel because, you know, Brian and I have been doing this a long time. Uh, that's how you find uh, Brian at the test cake. And uh, let's see, I think that's all the housekeeping. Uh, make sure if you're asking a question, you don't, you know, if you mess up, it's okay. But it's helpful if you tell us what exam you're doing and then put a cue next to it. So don't, we don't eat up a lot of time asking you like, well, what exam are you taking? Because the various exams, the depth of what they ask can be different based on that. And we might chew up some time. So if you follow that format, it's also helpful because it also helps me, you know, pick it out of the chat. Because a lot of people, you know, are chatting in the chat to other test takers, which we love. We have Victoria's alumni who pop in to help you with the brief and debrief. And, uh, you know, that helps me distinguish what is the flow of the chat versus what is a question. Okay, so I think that takes care of our housekeeping. So let's see what we got going on. How's it going? It's going fine, Tara. Uh, Eric, I saw that Erica figured it out. I saw she's booked both overtime sessions already. So uh, good job, Erica. She's going to join us this evening after for the overtime session and next Tuesday as well. Uh, the only uh, question I would be prepared for on the AMT is preference items, primarily being private activity municipal bonds. That would be an industrial development revenue bond. And uh, I would know public purpose, non-essential. Anything you want to add to that, Brian? Yeah, just the wording of his question is a little dangerous. It's not an AMT exemption. It's actually kind of the opposite. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you. That, yeah, there you actually isn't a, have to pay. Yeah, pay. it's not about an exemption. It's, it, it's, what, 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 it's called a preference item. So it's at what point do things become taxable? Now, let me get Brian his whiteboard here. It looks like he's... Now, that, now uh, the IDRs is the Yeah, most I think that's it. The industrial development revenue bonds and then public purpose non-essential bonds, those are stadium bonds. Yeah, that's... So, that's in other words, if you're subject to the AMT, the interest is going to be taxable to you. So, that's the test question. For, there. for Series 65. Series 7, you'll probably see it as a suitability type question. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, I think you should be prepared... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see it, but I would be, wouldn't be surprised if you do see it, right? That's so. right. That's exactly right. Woo all right, Tara. I hope you use the discount code. You know, I, I, you know, Brian's got good margin anyway, so I don't feel bad if we take a 20% discount. And I don't mind giving it. 
Uh, yeah, Clyde, so you go to deantinneytutoring.setmore.com classes and you registered. So you tried to get in last week. Yeah, we, we Clyde, I apologize. Uh, we were, uh, you know, trying it out. It, what, you know, go over there, Clyde, and see if they'll let you sign up for tonight. And if not, I'll send you the uh, the ID for the meeting. But next week, I think I got to smooth out. So everything's, I appreciate your patience as the channel evolves. There's, this channel is way different than what I intended when I started it. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But the journey has been uh, quite there. So, so the ladies, who Clyde, last week, uh, we kind of had to do it. That's why I got that 15 minute break in there, a little fudge factor for us. So uh, go over there, see if you can register. It's capped at 10. So if there's more than 10, you won't be able to do that. But I'll tell you what I'll do tonight before we uh, call it quits tonight. Remind me and I'll put up the meeting ID and you can just access it through Zoom tonight, tonight only. Otherwise, you're going to have to register. Uh, Shelly bought the test geek for series seven. Uh, there you go. So I'm, I don't know. I'm assuming with the Valentine's Day heart that you uh, you passed, I'm hoping. I just didn't have time to read all the material. You have to make editorial decisions, Shelly. So today I had a guy who I don't mind helping, but he had a question, Brian, on good delivery of securities certificates being makeable and breakable. I saw that. I got and, one too. And I said, I said to him, I said, listen, I don't mind helping you out on this, but I haven't had anybody tell me they've seen it in years. And I think you could go through your entire career at this point and never see a stock certificate. Now, as an old dude, I can tell you they exist and I have seen them. And anyways, I answered his question, but he had said, Shelly, that he had a lot still to do. And I said, well, then why are you in function four? Now, he thought when I said function four that I was discussing the way his test prep vendor had stuff laid out. I said, no, no, function four on the content outline. So the four things you got to be able to do critical functions as a broker, and that's how the FINRA does it. And I told him to get the content outline or find a customer, function one, open an account, function two, make an investment, function three. That's 91 questions. Function four is what happens after the trade, after you make that investment. Sure. Anyways, I told him that was a function four question, which means it's not target rich. I thought it was funny, Brian, because then another guy piled in and he said, I didn't know. I'm not going to study any of those other things. I go, well, no, that's not what I said. I didn't say don't func study function one, two, and four. I just said <laughs> you know, the action is in function three. I, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but yeah. I got that question last week from someone about the makeable, breakable yeah, stack. Yeah. And I said, oh, my God, this is like meeting my girlfriend from the 80s. I haven't <laughs> yes. seen it so long. <laughs> so Brian and I, maybe in our podcast, we'll talk about this, Shelly. One of our pet peeves that we you can get us going on a ramp pretty quickly is none of the test prep vendors ever call their Q banks for things that people haven't seen in years. Because okay. I get it. Nobody wants to say they've got less questions. Right. right. It's even like me on my channel, right? I don't I had a guy who didn't like one of my practice exams uh, because I, you know, I was new and I wasn't using the screen quite nice. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't as clean as it could have been. I left it up because I still thought it was worthwhile. And, you know, he, he was kind of hinting maybe I should take it down. I'm like, ah, you know, and then I got, what, 125 less questions on the channel. So, no, it's not coming down. But uh, test prep vendors do that a lot. And they're still using the QBank from the from the 80s, as Brian said. <laughs> uh, explain ADV form, and it's true 10-year, if it, and is it true it's 10-year background check? So two parts of the ADV, Clyde, you should be prepared to answer questions about. Uh, form ADV part one, and more importantly for you as a test taker, form ADV part two, which serves as the brochure, right? 2A tells you about the firm, 2B about the personnel. Uh, I don't know on the form ADV, there's a 10-year background check. On the U, There's no background check required in the securities industry. So Clyde, what you need to do on questions like that is like the fellow that we were talking about, cut and paste it or send us the particular question you're looking for. It's not a background check. We do ask on a U4 10 years of information, but that's, you know, firms do check that at some point, but it's not considered a background check. I don't think. What do you think, Brian? No, no. Yeah, the ADV is for a firm. Yeah. Not right for on. an individual. Right, right. Now, Form ADV 1, Part 1 can register the principles of the firm. The principles, yeah. But, but you know. Ugh, four question. That hurts. Yeah, I think a lot of people, Kelly, I don't know what you, if you had your six before that. Um, I think people sometimes, you know, I don't know what your study effort, I, it hurts, I know. But uh, that's not an uncommon way to miss this thing. So, Brian, what do you think? Any I hear it all the time. When people miss the 65, 
you assume it's going to be the laws and regs, but it's almost always the investment vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, and I, Kelly, I don't know your background. Brian and I have had this discussion backstage quite a bit. I think if you if you come to the 65 without an investment background, it is a real, real challenge because it's a lot of stuff and it doesn't really have a narrative thread. I think for certain individuals, the 65 can be harder than the seven. As I just mentioned, the seven has a narrative thread to it, right? Find a customer, open an account, make an investment. 65 is all over the place. Two Z here, three Zs here. Um if you rocked, if you rocked your, I don't know, Kelly, if you have a seven and you have a 63 and then you took a 65, if you do, maybe the 66 is a way to go short term because you don't have to wait 30 days. If not, if you have a six, 63, 65, or you just 65 because you're fee based, then you're going to have to wait 30 days. Uh, but you know, you know what to work on, right? You know what to work on. Mutual funds is huge. I think a lot of people forget how many mutual fund questions are on the 65, distinguishing between closed end and open end funds. Uh, what I would suggest, Kelly, is go to the uh, Google and get the test specifications for 65 and print that PDF and use that PDF to do a debrief with yourself. You know, go through it and put a plus next to things that you feel like you, you know, rocked, like regulations. Uh, put a minus next to all those investment vehicles you may need to work on, like futures, forwards, options. I'm just, you know, making up some that you might want to work on. Put a minus. And then a zero would just mean you're neutral on that. And then it take two or three days to refresh and reset and then, uh, you know, get back to it. So uh, let's see what Brian, I'm going to give Brian. If some you more don't mind me saying I have a Whoop, I'm Sorry, Brian, I just accidentally. Because okay. I've seen this so many times. Uh, I have a theory. I believe most of the difficulty investment vehicles is with the derivatives, the alternatives, and or the analysis, specifically being the discounted cash flow. Analysis. Yeah, I just had. I just had. No, no. I just had debrief the other day, Brian, and I think he was continuing. He said DCA, and I said dollar cost averaging. You had a few, few questions on dollar cost averaging is there, but I think he meant to say DCF, right? Discount. Uh, yeah. Discount. Uh, don't, don't, don't overdose either, too, on the math part of that. So nobody's expecting you, to, you know, to be able to do present value, future value calculations. No, there's right? no math in any of that. Recognition. Recognition. Four days. Wow, Dante, man, that's not recommended. But geez, you oh, know, I, when yeah. you pass in four days, that feels pretty damn good, I would expect. So uh, kudos, investment advisor representative. Wow, that's something. That's something. Of course, the MBA behind his name probably helped oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't a tabla, a rasa. He yeah, wasn't a blank that. plate. <laughs> uh, kudos, Andrew, kudos. 66. Well, good. You're hearing some good 66 stuff here, so. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you go to Tara if you want to. I don't know if it's uh, capped out at 10, but it's uh, Dean Tenney Tutoring .com. You go to class and you'll see free overtime session and you register for the class that it's free. So don't worry about the booking balls because it doesn't matter because it's free. But if that's the book tonight at the end, I'll give you the meeting ID number and you can join us through regular Zoom. Tonight will be the last time that I'm going to have a meeting ID number where you can join through Zoom. If you want to participate in that, uh, you need to you know, go through the channel. It's a Zoom thing, so it's, we can see each other. We can talk. Uh, you know, uh, We can do some board stuff. So, And then again, it's recorded, and I put it up in the playlist for overtime session. We start on time, and we end on time. Somebody was saying, oh, that team doesn't want to spend any more time with people. I'm like, no, that's not it. Uh, Lee, we can certainly do that if you'd like uh, in the overtime session. Uh, I'm also teaching an advanced options class uh, Wednesday, the following Wednesdays for $60, 90 minutes. We're going to do spreads and straddles. But here very quickly, a debit is when you have more money out than in, you're buying the spread. And whenever you buy the option, remember position, that's your maximum loss. A credit spread is more money in than out, and that's going to be your maximum gain. And all the action is going to take place between the strikes. So what you're going to do, Lee, to answer your question is net the premiums. You're going to net the premiums, right? Dollars out versus dollars in. More than happy to show that to you in the overtime session. And uh, go over. there's eight things, Lee, you got to know about a spread. And uh, those eight things are, can you identify it? Debit or credit, exercise or expire, widen or narrow, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. So in the, if you join us for the overtime, Lee, and if I do that, what I'm going to do in the chat is I'm going to go in order of what people have in the chat. 
in terms of what they want to do. And then again, I have a class that we'll be offering for that as well. Uh, Shelly, 65, present value. Brian is so good on this uh, this stuff. Uh, present value, if it's higher or lower than the market value, future value and present value, ADV. Uh, are you giving us debrief? It sounds like, Shelly, you took the test and passed, it looks like. Uh, solicitors and who gets registered, these topics, please. Oh, I guess so. You didn't pass. You're asking for this. Um, Brian, you want to take the uh, present value, future value, market value? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, if it is higher or lower than market value, future value and present value. Well, I think she means net present value. <laughs> well, <laughs> right, because that's when they ask you to, whether you would buy the investment or not. That's right. See, that's so, why we do discounted cash flow. That's to, right. So, Shelly, so, so the here's what we do. value right? is greater or less than. That's right. So, I, I look at the, Shelly, I look at the, uh, again, this is recognition. It's not, do you have to do this? But I say, what is the net present value of the future income streams I'm going to receive? And I come up with a number, right? Whatever that number is. Say it's a bond and I come up with 900. And then the bond is priced at 940. That's not a good deal, right? Because I just uh, said that I figured out that net present value was 900 and it's 940. Yeah, if I figured out it's 900 and the bond's priced at 850, then it's a good deal, right? So it either has positive net present value or lower, right? Future value, right, is what money I need in the future. So I say, okay, I have $20,000 today. What will this, what do I need this to be uh, in 20 years? That would be the future value. Present value, would I need 50,000 20 years from today? What, what would that 20 years from today? What would that be today? So, you're either going to go from present value, uh, the amount you have to invest today and figure out future value, or take future value and figure out what that would be today. Uh, advisory contract, we've talked about this form ADV part one and two. Um, I would know part, part two is used as a brochure. Solicitors of their broker dealers don't need to be registered as investment advisory firms or investment advisor reps if the solicitor is a broker dealer and it's an agent of the broker dealer who's actually soliciting. Okay, what do you want to add to that, Brian? Anything? Uh, I have a free YouTube video on my channel about solicitors. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, all his videos on YouTube. So Brian has That's not as many Sam YouTube Brian. He doesn't have as many free YouTube videos because, you know, he's his his teachable videos are the entire courses for, you know, $100. So, uh, but the videos he does have on YouTube are so fantastic. Uh, I always tell the story of somebody's taking a 24 and was struggling with buy-ins and sellouts. And, oh, it was like she had an a, 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 Epiphany, she called. Me. Oh, that was so great. So, uh, Annette, I'm so proud of you. Uh, you worked hard, you deserve that pass. So, I was so glad to hear that. I didn't even get to the other questions you had uh, for me to explicate for you, done. So, uh, I am so so happy for you. Nobody, you know, when, when people like Annette are dedicated, they're disciplined, they're organized, they're working their butts off, it's uh, it's just so cool that they get to pee, as Brian says, right? So no reg D. Yeah, that's surprising. A reg S. That's Very 24 surprising. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 10 is sales supervisor. So, so yeah. Annette, I am so, so happy for you. I'm just, that just makes my, my day. You know, we get a lot of uh, uh, emotional payoff when people make their mark because it's just, uh, you know, in tutoring sessions with Annette, you know, we get to get, get to know you a little better and know your, your present situation. I always joke with uh, nines and tens and 24s, Brian, that it's sometimes tougher for them because, you know, they have a lot going on. <laughs> you know, they're, they're already, you know, working at the broker dealer and, you know, they, their lives could be a little more complicated. There we go. Yeah. Professor Tenay. My, my dad has the same name as myself and uh, he resides in Mexico and he's decided that it's easier in Espanol to say Tenay than Tinny. And uh, he's also known in uh, Mexico as Professor Tenay. So I see that. I always think of my father instead of myself. So uh, credit spread is the difference between high credit quality bonds, Noah, and low credit quality bonds. It's not when it's weakening. It's either widening or narrowing. So when the credit spread is widening, that's a negative leading economic indicator. And when it's uh, narrowing, that is a positive economic indicator. So... Uh, because corporate bonds are sell, sell or lower their prices, so their yields go up. And then they go into treasuries. Yes, the price goes up, right? So if you're watching that, you know, that's what happens. Let me see. I'll do myself a little screen. So, you know, here's the credit spread. You know, uh, in the fourth quarter of 2016, Goldman Sachs made $400 million 
uh, on the junk bond desk. And the guy who uh, does the junk bonds at Goldman Sachs said when President Trump was elected, everybody got really nervous and started dumping their junk bonds. And I was the buyer. And so the price of the junk bonds went down, the yield went up. And then they bought treasuries and the price of treasury went up and the yield. So I was buying the junk bonds as the yield gap or credit spread was widening. He said that towards the end of the fourth quarter, everybody said, well, maybe it's not going to be so bad. And so people started, uh, you know, wanting to buy their junk bonds, and I was the seller. And as they bought it, the price of the junk bonds went up, the yields came down. People got out of their treasuries. So he said I was a buyer as it was widening, and I was a uh, seller as it was narrowing, and that's how he made his money. So, <laughs> Listen, I'm not, Erica, I'm not going to start doing everything for free for two reasons. Uh I don't need the money. And Brian makes fun of me saying I'm semi-retired. And, and secondly, you know, that's, it's, you know, that's not what the thing's about. The channel's already free. There's 400 hours of video content that is free. So I do get a little perturbed sometimes when people, you know, have something to say. I try and be nice, but it's like, okay, well, listen, you get what you pay for. You didn't pay anything. So I don't know why you're giving me grief. So Erica, I'll, I'll try, you know, I'll try, but. I, as I told you, you shouldn't count on overtime sessions every Tuesday. This will be three in a row. And, you know, maybe I'm thinking, I got to figure. So, Eric, the other thing, I'm, now that I've ranted a little bit, I got to find a pace that I can sustain. I don't want to start doing things that I, as an individual, can't sustain because I'm a one-man band. I'm looking forward to my collaborations with Brian because that would make us a two-man band. <laughs> you know, so. Um, Harmony. Harmony. There you go. <laughs> Uh, surrounding BD products. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I, the main thing that Jacob people get tested on is the difference between retail communication and correspondence. Yeah. So SROs would be FINRA and uh, New York. Um, I don't know about rhyme or reason, Jacob. I, uh, I'm hoping you pass, but, uh, you should definitely know, you know, I think retail communication and, and you can be, has to be approved pre-distribution and correspondence for your post. I uh, probably was on the next 10 as well. I would imagine. What do you think, Brian? Any rhyme or reason? Yeah, yeah, that doesn't sound much like a surprise. Yeah, yeah, you know, advertising on the seven has been. Yeah, there. be careful too. Don't be thinking too much, Jacob, about rhyme or reason as it relates to these exams. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, just ride the horse in the direction it's going. Well, no, the reason that's very testable because you want to. You, what you're interested in is your after-tax return. So if you're in a lower tax bracket, the munis aren't going to be as attractive as if you're in a higher tax bracket. So, you know, rich people buy munis. When I was a baby broker, Noah, I used munis. I think a 12-year-old could sell a muni. I would cold call. That's I'm dating myself. Back in the day, we dialed for dollars. Oh, my goodness. And I'd say, hey, Noah, are you interested in tax-free income? And if you're a lower tax bracket, that's not going to appeal to you because the muni is going to pay like three and the corporate bond pays six. And so unless you're in a higher tax bracket, you're going to say, why would I want three if I can get six? I'll say, well, three tax-free, what bracket are you at? Now, if you're in a 50% bracket, getting three not paying taxes is the equivalent of getting six. That is very, very testable. So, you know, you need to be able to do a suitability question about whether somebody should buy a muni or corporate based on their tax bracket. Uh, tax exempt for the Fed and state, if you're resident, indeed. Who doesn't want that? Well, again, we just told you, you don't want that if you can get more. You don't care whether you're paying taxes. What you care is after you pay taxes, what are you left for? You don't want the tax tail wagging the investment dog. So, you know, that's the point. So who doesn't want tax-free income? Somebody who's in a very low tax bracket. Uh, discounted cash flow, please. Well, again, you're just going to have to recognize it. It comes up on the test in a couple of ways. Uh, you definitely need to know on 6566 that when we do it with stocks, it's called the dividend discount model. And if we assume that this stock will have a, a dividend that grows, it's called the dividend growth model, and that would high, uh, justify a higher uh, valuation. Now, and then they'll trick you like little things like you can't do dividend growth on a preferred stock because the dividend doesn't change, right? It's fixed or stated. Uh, as it relates to investments, uh, you know, you, again, you're trying to come up with the idea of what is it worth? You know, I always use the classical one, Shelly, is the lottery. You know, I say, Shelly, do you want $100,000 a year for life or do you want a million dollars now? That becomes a math question. Now, I, Shelly, in our live stream, I had said that I would hire my friend Lee, who's the math guy, and have him do the math and tell me what I should do. And then the guy in the live stream said, you should be able to do your own math. I said, listen, there are, I know billionaires who, do, who don't do their own math. He was making the 
thing that you shouldn't be in our business if you can't do math. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of very successful people in our business that are not math geeks. You know, Brian's the test geek. Brian's very competent at math. But, you know, the point is not can you do discounted cash flow? Do you have a general understanding of the inputs and the outputs? Recognition. Uh, Brian was telling me he's working on a video. Where's that at? Aren't you working on some video you were telling me about this? It's not quite in the can yet. It's being edited. Uh, I wouldn't worry. A lot of test prep vendors, Erica, go way overboard on accretion. Way overboard. What I mean by that is I wouldn't make you do any math there. I would know a zero, you have to accrete. Oh, zeros are also known as original issue discount bonds. And I would, about 50% probability, Erica, you're going to have to do decretion, amortization downward at a muni bond at a premium. So that's what I would worry about is that. So I'm giving Brian some board space here. Adjusting so. the original cost of a muni for tax purposes. This is for capital gain or loss. Yeah. For a discounted bond, you have to add to the cost. That's accretion. For a premium bond, you have to decrease it. That is amortization. And you might have to do practical application, Eric, about 50% that you're going to have to do practical application. I know you're in the overtime. Uh, and if you're in the overtime session, you want me to do one on the whiteboard, I'm more than happy to do so. Erica, have you seen my class notes on this? Oh, there you go. Did she did she get I think she bought her class notes, didn't she? I think she did. Yeah. Well, good. There you go. So uh Dante, Tara wants uh wants to know if uh Brian and Dean are lying or there's do no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, did what you did with your counter. Uh Brian, what's your email? So Brian's email, I have it right here for you. Yeah, I have do 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 where is Brian's email? There it is. That's it. Brian at Test Geek. Uh, testgeekexamprep.com. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't have done that because when I do that, then it. Uh... Shelly for the DCF, if you want to email me, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about the DCF. Oh, there you go. There you go. That Brian, he is a good guy. He is a good <laughs> guy. Um. And he's working on a video. I know it's going to be great because his, his you know, he does math. He does math. At a, a Brian used to be a, a, a teacher of, what were you, teacher of high school or teacher? Of, uh, high school science, actually. High school science teacher. So yeah, that was 30 some years yeah, ago. Hey, it's, I, hey, I'm sure it's like riding a bike, right? Yeah, sure is. What are commodities? Well, the test question, Kelly, is commodities are not securities. Eric, I'm sorry. Commodities are not securities. So if I have commodities in my account and uh, they're not covered in SIPC liquidation, for example, they have a different regulatory framework. And so commodities would be like soybeans, uh, uh, cocoa beans, uh, corn, uh, gold, uh, silver. Those are commodities. So kind of a broad question, Erica. I'm not sure in the context of what you are asking that question, but in the context as a test taker, I'd say commodities are not securities. Uh, Mary, thank you. So, yeah, it's all, you know, like I say, it, I could give you a lot of free content. So, you know, so we're doing another one, Mary. I don't know. Uh, that one was kind of, like I say, I appreciate you guys helping me work out the kinks and trying to get other things that are available to you uh, from the channel, like that, uh, those overtime sessions. Oh, uh, fantastic, Mary. So I guess we won't see you in the overtime session unless you have 66 questions. So fantastic. So kudos on uh, making your mark on your series seven. Woohoo. Love that. Yeah, there you go. No, I, and then raw materials, you know, for fu futures and forwards, no, are contracts on those commodities. Uh, I don't think you're going to see on a series seven, anything except they're not covered under SIPC on your 65, 66. There are a couple of uh, questions on commodities. Love it. We love it, Mary, when Victoria's test takers come back and say hi, because it's so good for morale. So we appreciate all you Victoria's test takers who uh, come over. Uh, I don't have, yeah. You want to yeah. close your screen? Oh, sorry. <laughs> we got We got to practice, too, for the podcast. So. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't make videos on everything, so I don't have a video. Uh, we're updated. You can go to your dashboard, so I don't make videos on everything. Uh, and your test prep vendor should have that available for you. I know that uh, 
Kaplan has that. And I post it on our Reddit communities. We have sister Reddit communities. If you go to our series 66 on Reddit and you put in advertising rules, you'll see that I posted the entire PDF of those update rules. So I will not be making a, a video on those rules. Uh, there is a PDF available on the Reddit uh, for you, or there's a PDF in determining on your test prep vendor if you're using Kaplan on your dashboard. Can agents lend to family members? Yeah, I mean, on the BD side, yes. If immediate, I don't know what that means. Ugh, ugh. Well, holding period return, I'm not showing your seven. Holding period, settlement dates. Well, settlement dates are pretty straightforward. Those are recognition style test questions. T plus one for governments and minis. T plus two for uh, corporates and municipals. And uh, regs, um, yeah, that's super close. But holding periods, I just made a video, Lasha, on how many days and what are the percentages. And I do cover six month holding periods, uh, 12 month holding periods. And that's a relatively new video that you can find and it goes over some of that. I would worry about six months and 12 months, right? More than 12 months is a long-term capital gain, six months for restricted stock. A combination, Jacob, is a straddle with different strike prices. And I see you said you're in the overtime session, great. So uh, just remind me and we can go over that. A combination is a straddle with different strike prices. You wouldn't do anything different. You would calculate the break-evens by combining the premiums adding it to the call, subtracting it from the put. So same break-evens. Where is it profitable? Either inside or outside of those two break-evens, right? When do you use it? You're either buying volatility or you're selling volatility. Two, uh, there you go. Kaplan, STC. Oh, my God. I, I love, Shelly, that you're a reader. I get so frustrated with people who don't want to read the damn books. So, you know, now once you've read the books, then you have Brian and myself as a bridge. I told somebody that today. That's Brian's thing, right? We're not trying to sell you books. We're trying to help you then take the book or the QBank and then translate that to what you're going to actually see on your exam. So there you go. I love it. DCF will be your friend. That's right. At the end of the day, uh, you should do it. All right. Well, look, is that is that it? Did we already get everything, all the stuff covered? Anybody got any more questions? Did I miss anybody? I guess we could if we, uh, uh, I guess we could do the combo. Uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking about That's what, what I was doing. thinking, too. You want to do it? Okay, let's do it, Brian. So here we go. Since we, uh, looks like I've got all the, the questions covered. Let's look at a combo. Straddle combo. Let me give you. See, now, I always put those two words together so that I do too. Know I think that so straddles and combinations are roughly. Yeah, let me the same uh, get rid thing. of this right here. Um, let me get rid of that. Um, so, Jacob, the reason I do it, I don't know what Brian does, why Brian does it, but I'll tell you why I do it. I think a lot of people struggle because they think there's a zillion different things they're going to get tested on, and that's not true. And what I mean by that is options, for example. I like to think of it as nine option strategies that you're held accountable for. Nine option strategies you're held accountable for. And of those nine, right, two are multiple option strategies, spreads and straddles. So I don't think of it as spreads and then I got debit spreads and I got call spreads and then I got put spreads and I got calendar spreads. I just have a category called spreads. And then I have a category called straddles and I consider combinations to be in that same category. So I don't handle them differently. Okay, so Brian, I hope you guys can see his uh, old fashioned whiteboard. I can from five screen. So straddle combination, two break evens, strike, strike price plus, plus both premiums. Points. That's right. There. And if it's a long straddle or combination, you're anticipating volatility in either direction. That's right. Or a short straddle or combination, you're anticipating the market to be stable. You are neutral, neither bullish nor bearish. So all of that works for either of those. Yeah, I, I would add to you on all speculative option strategies, you're either buying volatility or you're selling volatility. Volatility is either your friend or it's not. So for example, when I buy a call, I'm buying upward volatility. When I buy a put, I'm buying downward volatility. When I buy an option, I have to be right about three things. Direction, long call, for example, up. How far up? I got to cover my out-of-pocket cost. 
and timing. So when you're doing a straddle, what you're in a short call, you're selling volatility. And in a short put, you're selling the volatility, right? You're taking the other side of the bet. So now you're just, again, this idea of directional where I say, okay, I'm not sure if it's going up or down. I just think it's going to move. So either buy a straddle or buy a combo, or I don't think it's going to move. It's going to stay within the tra trading range. Brian's point about neutral, right? So uh, those are, I think that's combo, Jacob, I think straddles and combos are actually more straightforward than are uh, some of the other ones. So there's four things you got to be able to do. Can you identify it? Yeah. As a straddle or combo, even if that wasn't testable, Jacob, I just told you it is. But, if, you know, even if it wasn't, if you can't identify, you don't know what to do next. Can you calculate the break evens? There's two. It's the only one on your seven that has two. Can you determine where it's profitable? We have a great memory aid device for that, Silo. Silo, that stands for short inside, long outside. If you're short the straddle or combination, you want it in between those two numbers, the market price. And if you're long, you want it outside. And then the fourth test question is, when do you use it? And you use the long straddle or long combination when you expect volatility, but direction's uncertain. And you do the short combination storage straddle when you think it's going to stay within the trading range. Yeah. Neutral. So very much, uh, I, think, I think straightforward is multiple option strategies go. Okay, let's see. So that was Jacob there. For QBank, my always Jacob, my QBank answer is always Kaplan. Kaplan QBank is the best. It's about 60 bucks with uh, my Guru 10 discount code at checkout. It comes in at a little less than 60. It's got, I think, 3,600 questions in there. I help you with any questions you have. I'm agnostic about your test prep vendor as it relates to, you know, helping you. But it's easier if you got a Kaplan QBank because I can bring it up backstage and see what you're looking at. Do, yeah, uh, let's see, two weeks out. Well, everybody's a little different. Yeah, I think two weeks. If you got a 76, I, I wouldn't even think a week. Yeah. What do you think, Brian? I think that's, you know, exactly. you're, I, I, was mean, exactly. yeah. I mean, you know, why hang around? I mean, you know, get okay. it done, get on with life. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Those scores hurts. They hurt. Man, damn, that hurts. You, well, listen, so now you know when you're doing your other study, make sure that you're doing timing yourself when you're in a practice exam. So you need to know whether you're going to have a time constraint. You may not feel this, Elizabeth, but they're not trying to sort people by how quick they think. So you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have run out of time is my point. If you can't frame an answer in a minute and a half, you need to guess B, assign it to the universe and move on. Now, in terms of best sections to reread, now everybody's a little different on this, Elizabeth. I'm not so sure how much rereading accomplishes you know, you might want to consider rereading some different content, maybe get, you know, Brian's supplement or something. Uh, I'm not sure rereading re a past perfect uh, chapters is a productive use of your time. What I would suggest is taking three or four days to refresh and reset. As we said, print the series seven content outline on FINRA, use it to do your personal debrief. And then I would resume by, you know, uh, rinse and repeat. It's not like you missed it by a bunch. Work on your timing. Right, because if you're short on time on 30, that could have been the difference. I don't know if you changed answers. Don't. So you don't. You really need to. I don't think you need to dramatically alter where your study plan was because you barely missed the mark. What I do think you need to do is those other variables. Maybe get those under control. Uh, I'd also tell you, Elizabeth. Remember that function three is 91 questions. That's the investment category. That's the options, the munis, the mutual funds. So that would be what I would suggest. Go back to that target rich environment of function three. Brian? Absolutely. Uh, again, 71%. Uh, I hesitate in saying this, but past perfect is probably what's making you take two. Elizabeth, long. really, we're not, <laughs> Brian and I are fans of past perfect. Uh, you know, reason I'm not Elizabeth a fan is they give you plenty of information. In fact, I think it's too much. They send you down some rabbit holes. I just had recommended Elizabeth that somebody who is using Past Perfect used my channel as a confirmation of what is testable and what is Past Perfect non-testable minutia. Right. So whether you use my channel, whether you use a paid supplement like Brian or Kaplan QBank, I would suggest supplementing your Past Perfect. Well, not necessarily. I mean, copper is uh, one of the leading economic indicators. In fact, we call it Dr. Copper. Erica, if you get asked about defensive, it's not going to be commodities. It's going to be about stocks that have products and services that are resilient to the business cycle. So, you know, gold has negative correlation. I don't know if I'd call it defensive.
but we don't use the term defensive on the test. I'm not talking about past perfect or test prep vendors. I'm talking about the test. On the test, defensive is about stocks. It's about a stock that delivers products and services resilient to the business cycle. Pharmaceuticals, uh, food, uh, utilities, you know, that kind of thing. Brian, Might you know, I make a suggestion to Erica? Sure. sure. Studying the Series 7, I wouldn't read another thing about commodities. Not Yeah. One. Yeah. Waste you know, I, I told you, Erica, you were so great at, you know, taking our advice on your previous exams. And the thing I was most worried about, and I'm so happy that you made your mark, just like Annette made her mark, because you deserve it. Because I know, again, you're like Annette, you're dedicated, you're disciplined, you're organized. Uh, and I was most afraid, and you didn't do it, thank goodness, and you got that P, uh, that we you go down some past perfect rabbit hole and we never see you again. And so what Brian is trying to warn you is that commodities is another potential rabbit hole as it relates to passing your seven. Now, when when you take your 65 or your 66, that would be different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, Jacob, and like I say, if you want me to get a whiteboard and do that in the overtime, I'm more than happy to do so. Well, we I think we just went over that, Jason. I don't know if you came to the party late, but uh, we explained that this would be for industrial revenue bonds. IDRs. Which are private activity bonds. And so the explanation is if, let's just start at the beginning. If you make X number of dollars, you know, a lot of money, say a couple hundred thousand bucks, and you start taking deductions. And then you say like, uh, you owe me $50,000 for being a citizen of the Republic. So for people who make too much money, the IRS says, why don't you try it again using this alternative method? Meaning you're going to end up owing taxes. And so under the alternative method, the AMT, the alternative minimum tax, there are what we call preference items, things that become taxable to you. For example, I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. And as long as Dean doesn't make too much money, this is a deductible business expense. But if I make too much money, they're going to say my home office, my studio is a preference item. I don't get to deduct it. Here, it's either I don't get to deduct it or I'm going to pay taxes I otherwise wouldn't have to. So if you're subject to the AMT, it's a basic suitability question. It's binary. Jason, are you subject to the AMT? Any client I ask that is going to know it's either yes or no. The only follow-up question on the test suitability, if they say yes, then we do not rec recommend an industrial development revenue bond or a public purpose non-essential, which is a stadium, so private purpose. So. So I don't know if you, the explanation, Jason, I have three lectures on mini bonds in the playlist, three. So I cover it there. You can go to the video description, the timestamps, and you will find where you can hit the timestamp. It'll take you right to that discussion. So may I add one thing? Oh, of course, always. Uh, actually, it, it kind of adds to what you had said 15 minutes earlier. Okay. Why are IDRs subject to AMT and not the other munis? Because the IRS says so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the other you way, Jason, argue too. or try to rationalize. Yeah. Those well, Jason, things. the other thing okay. is, you know, we just uh, spent uh, $500 million in public money to build the Raiders a new stadium here in Las Vegas, Allegiant. And that's not like building a new high school, right? The major beneficiary of an IDR bond, our IDR bond is the corporation. Jason, that's very testable. The corporate credit backs that bond. That's very testable. So an industrial development revenue bond, right? The corporation is the major beneficiary. So it's not like we're building a high school or building a, you know, city hall, we're building a, you know, a corporate campus for Boeing, for example, or, right. you know, a, a factory for Tesla or something like that. Right. Yeah. I think we, 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 we might have to form like a past perfect support group. Yeah, really, okay. <laughs> well, that's the good news, Matt. So the good news on past perfect, I had somebody today, Matt, in social media, and I told him that the guy was just, you know, I shouldn't go. I'm, I said, no, you're going to pick up some points. He, he had like a 60 something. I said, you're going to pick up points from the past birth. What I always tell them, Brian and Matt, I'll tell, tell you the same thing I, I tell them is go to the channel and get the test geek practice exam for whatever series you're taking. Brian's exams have very strong correlation to the actual exam. So what I told that past perfect guy is go get Brian's test geek either through the channel free or for, I think it's like, 20 bucks. You can buy the PDF. I'm a big fan of the PDF. We want you to be very clear. All you get for $20 is Brian's PDF. But you know what I like about it is you can mark it up. You can do whatever. If you want to take it the old fashioned way, you can do it. Uh, but I had him go do that so he could get a score that he could rely upon in terms of 
whether he's going to you know, pass or not. That's my biggest issue with, uh, you know, a lot of test prep vendors. Pass perfect, you're going to pick up some points. There are other vendors where I don't, that's the same thing. I don't trust their scores. And I say, hey, go take a Brian test so you can get a, get a good mark. Yeah, MSRB rules are there. I don't know if uh, we still, Devin, have uh, Annette. She just took her 10 uh, just just yesterday. So, But, yeah, MSRB rules are there. 60 is on the past perfects. Yeah, I think that'd be okay. I mean, again, uh, on the 10, I have a Kaplan practice test in the 10 playlist. And, Devin, you could go hit pause and answer and hit play and see how you do on the Series 10 uh, Kaplan practice exam. Uh, it's a slog. I would tell you, the, I think the 10 is a slog. It's just, it's a lot. A lot. You're welcome, Erica. I had a question where you can keep art collectibles, coins, choices were Coverdale's, 529's, Utma or Utma. Eh, I don't know. Um, I think the question would be, it depends on your custodian, actually. It depends what kind of coins. So I'm not sure about that one. Do you have any idea on that one, Brian? Well, we know it can't be IRAs, right? Yeah, you wouldn't put it where this IRA is one of his choices. I think his choices no. were. Ugmas and Utmas. Yeah. And covered uh, yeah, I, I, it mainly depends on the custodian. I don't like any of those choices, to be honest with you. Know, as long as we can answer sets like that, you just got to, you know, do what you're going to do and move on, right? Yeah. No, I think I just went over the AMT. This is the third time. Yeah, yeah this is. It's a I think you know, maybe I'm out of sequence on my comments. Maybe it's me. I'm messing up on my comments. I think we just did that. You know, so I'm not going to do it again. Yes, uh, we do post no the replay, and I timestamp it. I probably won't get a timestamp tonight, but you can go to the replay and look for the timestamp AMT, and we are they susceptible it. to it if they're using accelerated depreciation. Well, in a partnership, there are preference items in yes. oil and gas partnerships. Oil and gas, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you'll see that at all, no, no on the 65. No. I think partnerships, you're just going to get some very basics on flow through and what's a GP and an LP. Wow. Well, that's beyond the live stream, Mark. <laughs> what formulas you should know is the balance sheets. So go into the playlist, Mark. Or if you want, join us in the overtime. If you didn't sign up for the overtime tonight, sign up next week. And when I have a whiteboard, I'll be more than happy to walk you through some of the formulas. Uh, I would focus on formulas you're going to have to actually do, not formulas you have to recognize, would be some of the liquidity ratios, working capital, current ratio, uh, quick ratio, um, debt PE ratio. So there's a handful of them. So you can find that in the channel on the, on the 65 playlist. It's called Analytical Tools, or you can join me in overtime. Well, thank you. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I put a lot of time into it. Wow. Wow, that's great. So 75 on 66, uh, pass perfect, test geek 78, and then, uh, and then, and 85. Wow. So you should be fine, Tara. This is a great score. So. Oh. Well, tax treatment, Jacob, is just knowing there's a flow through. So what I mean by that is a flow through that there is no tax consequences to the direct participation program, the partnership. The partners are going to receive the income or losses that will be passed through to them. It's either going to be passive income or passive losses and whatever happens stays there. So again, Jacob, I would uh, recommend to you and I'll timestamp this and I'll put a, uh, a link to my video on taxation. And basically what happens in your passive area, your portfolio stays there. So I think the only question, Jacob, you would get here is a suitability question where a customer has a large amount of uh, passive activity losses or a large amount of passive income. What might you recommend? So, Jacob, for example, I was giving a, a due diligence tour and tasting of the winery and the doctor told me that he thinks he should not invest because he you know, already has all these passive activity losses. And I said, well, doctor, as you know, they're not doing you any good. They're stuck there. You can't use them against your portfolio or your paycheck income. So actually, doctor, I think you need to make a bigger asset allocation to this winery because it throws off passive income. So I think you need to you know, make a $300,000 investment. And uh, he invested for two reasons. I mean, it made economic sense. You don't want the tax tail wagging the stock dog, but also because suitability wise, there we go, suitability, it's a suitability question. And yeah, Tina, you can slow down or speed her up on the Google. Same with me, you can speed me up and slow me down on, on Google. So, uh, but partnerships, 
On the seven in general, don't spend a lot of time there. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on partnerships. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on margin. They're just not target rich environments. As we said, don't spend a lot of time on the uniform practice code. So stay on the broad avenues and highways, Jacob, of series seven information. Boy, how things have changed over the 25 years, huh? 30 what do you years. mean? No, the limited partnerships. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Jake, that stuff yeah. used to be, but it's just. That used to be 10, 11, 12 questions, though. Not yeah. so much anymore. And as we said, Jacob, no test prep vendor changes their their content for that. So they're still teaching the 80s partnership content. I, I'm not. Listen, I get it. I, I get it. But it's, you know, it's a waste of your time. I don't even know what an RSU is, Noah. What's an RSU? I, I, what's the acronym for? Obviously, no. If I don't know what it is, it's not important. Do you know what an RSU is, Brian? I don't know. I, I'm trying to make up one. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Brian and I don't know what it is, and it's yeah. not on the test. Oh, may, maybe it means restricted stock units. Maybe that's it. Wow. But Where did that come from? I, I, well, I'm just doing the same thing you're doing, Brian. I'm yeah. going through my brain housing group saying, what does that look like? All right. So are we ready for our drawing? So I think we're towards the end, our drawing. Uh, let's put, uh, let's make it uh, Valentine. Valentine, we since it is. Uh, Valentine. Yeah, let me go get this so you can see it. Be my Valentine. Share screen. Okay, let me get rid of that. So if you would like to participate in the drawing for our uh, coaching call, our 30-minute coaching call, now is the time to do so. Oh, incentive stock units, I haven't had options. I haven't had anybody 65, not 7. And if you get on the 65, it'll be about tax consequences. Only one entry for our drawing? Really? So remember, the drawing is for a 30-minute uh, coaching call. Uh, for on Thursday, it's yours to do what I just call it a coaching call because I don't want people to think it's tutoring because I charge for tutoring and I don't charge for the coaching call. So, you know, people say, what's the difference? I No difference. It's your, you are long the coaching call. So we can do whatever you want. We can talk about your study plan. Uh, in Erica's, we did spreads and straddles, whatever you would like, whatever you'd like. So Clyde, if you want in, you put Valentine into the chat. So, Clyde, I see you want in. So, if you want in, you put Valentine into the chat. And then it goes into this bucket. And then I hit the button and I will do the drop. No more. By the way, you don't have to participate. It's funny. I always see that we have more people than participate in the drawing. So, that's okay. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to participate in the drawing. That's perfectly okay. So, uh, here we go with the drawing. Drum roll, please. Now, remember, Erica, I hate to break it up. I don't know if Erica entered. You can't win, Erica, because you won last time, didn't you? So there we go. Woo so I know you're joining us in the overtime. I think I saw you signed up for the option class tomorrow night. So, you, boy, you got a lot of stuff. You, you got a lot of Dean time in your future. A lot of Dean time in your future. Okay, Professor so remember, Ray. next week, next week, we start at 5, not 6. We go 5 to 6. If you want to participate in the overtime session next week, you go to deantennytutoring.setmore.com and uh, you'll see it as a class. It's called free overtime session. That'll start at 615. Oh, you didn't, Erica? Okay, my bad. So you're eligible again to participate in the drawings. So for those of you that are joining us for the overtime, did anybody not be able to register for that? Let me just, uh, if you want to join us in 15 minutes, we're there. This is the last time you will be able to access that overtime through that Zoom meeting ID. From moving forward, you'll have to go to the uh, site and you'll have to register for the overtime. And again, it's capped at 10 people. First come, first serve. When I see you there in 15 minutes, I'll open up chat and we just go through what's in the chat. And uh, you, whoever's in chat first with the question, we work our way through that. We don't answer two questions from the same person until we've answered somebody else's question. All right, uh, chat, uh, anything else here before we call it a night? Okay, so uh, we'll see you next Tuesday, 5 p.m. 
We do this every Tuesday. Uh, join us, tell your friends, and we'll see you uh, next time. The rest of you, I'll see you in the overtime session in 15 minutes.